So now we have an image saved. So I just saved these files, and there it is. easy as that. Now, it really is advisable to keep a library of these files, not only so you can uh, show the customer before and after, but so that you have a reference for the next time. Correct. Now, if you want to put curses on, and no, no, we're not talking bad words. He here doesn't mean cursing. He means a cursor. And we want to measure. <laughs> we go to the falling edge with number one. I click the side button, and I mean by number one here, we click this here originally. When that's highlighted, I moved it right here to number one. Now I'm going to go move number two. Oops. That's the turn it off. There you go. And basically, that'll tell you the time of and and voltages of a waveform. So it tells me 2.3 milliseconds is the time and frequency, the amount of something, the time uh, something happens in a second, amount of time something happens in a second. So right, right there we basically have our information on voltage up top. Here's our average voltage, okay? There's our maximum. Remember, the peak got to be 35 volts or more. There's our amount of time that it's actually on, okay? And we could do this, since they're both the same, you know the amount of on time. Now, when Pierre races it up, race it up for a second, Pierre. I'll try to hold it steady again. So you notice it went way past that. You can, you can see where the bar is. Race it one more time here. You notice it went way past that bar. So you can do that and see if it's working. Now, a lot of cars, when you race it up and then let off on it, the injector actually shuts all the way down. Okay. And that is a normal type thing, not only to save fuel, but to prevent backfire. Okay. So we only have a few minutes left. We'd like to thank you for uh, coming out. We're going to answer some questions. And uh, let us know if uh, you like what you've seen. And again, we'd like to thank, uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors. And our sponsors, again, are the great OTC SPX, my company, ATTS, um, and of course, P10. Um, it was a whole bunch of yawn, well over a thousand people, and we thank again everyone who helped us out to do this. If you have questions or comments, you can always email us. You can get us at info, I-N-F-O, at tstseminars.org, or you can email me directly, gt at tstseminars.org, or gt at attstraining.com. Uh, Craig, give me some more questions, and uh, we will go on from there. How do you guys yeah. test fuel volume? How do we test fuel volume? I'm blinding myself here. Put that thing this way. Okay. How do we test fuel volume? Um, the best way to test fuel volume is with a flow gauge. Now, there's, you know, a lot of people used to do a pint in 15 seconds. The bottom line is sometimes it just doesn't mess up in 15 seconds, does it? So right. there are a couple of decent tools out there with a good flow gauge. That's what I use to test it. By the way, I can show you in that, that article that I wrote, I mean, a true case study, where current ramping was perfect on that vehicle. The pump and the amperage was almost identical to the good pump. The difference was two-tenths of a gallon versus five-tenths of a gallon of flow. So that's what I use. Anything else? Let's see. Um can you use this tool for ESC and VSC steering control, such as to zero out a rack if a problem occurs after an alignment? That would be vehicle specific, and again, I haven't tried that. Now, again, that may be in something like uh, Toyota and other vehicles. Um, I would have to ask Ed to comment on that. I have not uh, played with it enough, and again, we haven't done it yet. I'm sure down the road, if it doesn't do it now, it can do it. Uh, again, I would ask uh, Steve or Ed to comment from SBX on that. Um, how can I be notified of future classes? Well, you can always check our, can always check our website. Um, if we do have your email address, if you contact us, 
we could email you out uh, the information. Now again, we'll warn you, TST is a 501c3 non-for-profit education approved. Um, basically, Pierre, myself, and Craig, this is our own time. We're not getting paid for this. Um, it's a real not-for-profit. So, it's no problem. No problem. <laughs> so um, there are seminars that you do have to pay for a webcast. This one happens to be free because of our friends at SPX. So um, again, there's other ones that we could get in touch with you or feel free to go on. Check our website out and you'll see some other ones we recorded. Uh, other questions, Craig? Well, we do a simulcast once a month, September through June. We often hold uh, other webcasts based upon demands. We did uh, Snap On Modus, um, based on demands, Genesis. <laughs> hey, you gotta pay for that one. <laughs> yes, we did do the Genesis stuff, and we do other companies. I mean, you know, this is a really non biased view. We're really hooked up. Yes, we've done Snap On, ATS, Toyota. Um, Vagcom, uh, there's we, so many different tools. We did a scan tool shootout where we basically compared similar features on a variety of scan tools on the same one or two cars and you see how they performed. And you can check it out. And by the way, the OTC Genesis did a very nice job. Back, uh, back then when we did that, we did not have the Pegasus. So this is not, I don't work for OTC SPX. What you've seen here tonight is real. When something didn't happen or we didn't know the answer, we gave you the God's honest truth. Uh, overall, my personal opinion is this tool is a great bang for the buck. There's great information. It's updated quite easy. Their tech support is good. It has Identifix. It's the only one with that built-in Identifix. It is overall, in my opinion, a very good tool. Does it need some little help here and there? Yes, like every tool. You know, but, any computer-based tool you're going to buy today, which is every tool, is going to need constant updating, whether it's a manufacturer or an aftermarket tool. It, they constantly need updating. They're always going to be a bug or two in the software, and um, it's just part of the modern world with computers. Yeah. And you know, um, down the road we'll be we'll be telling you how you can really hook this up uh, to the web, and we can kind of take over PC-based tools. We do this now with some other tools where we could walk you through. And if you buy yourself about an eighty-dollar webcam, it's like John Madden football. We did this years back and we still do this. We could actually tell you, no, Bob, over here. Or over here, there's where to put it. And that's the reading you're going to get. Okay? So this is something that we could help you diagnose down the road, right over the internet. I mean, we've done this already. Um, I will speak to Ed and stuff. I'm sure we can do this right on the screen. Now, the stuff. caveat here is you need a high speed internet connection on your end. We, yes, your we, end. We have that. <laughs> you <laughs> need a high speed internet connection. And God was good tonight. It did not um, storm. The thunderstorm did not take our electricity <laughs> out. It did not take us out. <laughs> so, uh, again, any other questions, Craig, because before we say good night and thank you? That is it. Just a lot of kudos. Okay. And uh, well, again, I want to thank. Uh, SPX, uh, my buddy Ed Lipscomb there, um, again Steve Zack, uh, probably Pat Pierce is on, and uh, Gina Tuttle, if you're out there, Gina, hello, I'll see you at the Clean Air Conference. Um, again, uh, Wayne Colonna from ATSG, uh, Bernie Thompson, 